everyone welcome back to another counter side video so today we will have a discussion on the high value srs that you might have or you might need but before that if you wanted updated counter side videos please hit the subscribe button down below okay so first on our list would be hilde so hilde is actually one of the first counters that you actually are going to get um when you start the game she is actually still being used until now especially in pvp a uh, very good i i think if they only gave copies of her she would be one of the top srs but unfortunately for hilde you cannot get copies of her, of her in the game i'm i don't know in the future if 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 your summons will going to yield copies of hilde but for now you'll be forced to um what do you call this you'll be forced to level her up from 100 to 110 using fusion core so that's the drawback in having her but again she's still high value because let's take a look at her skills guys so for her skills basic skills so basic attack moves forward knocking enemies backward with aoe damage so basic attack damage is a total of a plus 20 percent up to level five her passive is actually quite interesting because she inflicts aoe damage around her um this is actually uh what they call this upon deployment and increases attack by 10 percent for all counters including herself so this is actually a good addition or a buff for your counters especially for those who have a counter heavy team so counter attack is at plus um counter attack is at plus uh, total 8% in addition, so that's 18% if you level this up to level 4. At level 5, is additional counter crit at 20%. Again, a lot of buffs just by bringing her. So again, um, she is quite tanky with buffs and with the attack that she has. She is actually very, very good in your team's PvE or PvP-wise. For her special, she branches two swords and moves forward, including AoE damage. So damage total plus is going to be 25%. Level 5 damage resistance for 20% for 8 seconds immediately after skill. So again, that is, this is why I tell you guys that she's tanky. And her ultimate skill is Dragon Slayer. 45 seconds cooldown, Valence hit, hits is 3, so leaps backward into the air and crashes to the ground, inflicting AoE damage, so she's invincible until she lands. Okay, so damage is going to be a plus 25% up to level 4, and up to le and level 5 is casts a barrier equal to 25% of max HP for 15 seconds after the skill. So again, she is a very good, um, she's a very good striker with buffs. And she is tanky. So what can you ask for? So the only drawback for her is you need to use fusion cores for you to get her from 100 to 110. But again, at level 100, she is already high value, and you don't need to you know need to spend fusion cores until uh, unless you really want to. Okay, so our next uh, our next SR is going to be one of one also of the most used. Um, Jushiun actually came as well with your account once you joined the game for those who do not know this same as um, Hilde he doesn't get copies you're going to level him up from 100 to 110 using fusion cores but again at level 100 he is already magnificent okay so let's take a look at his skills so in terms of his basic attack so dashes forward and, and backward a long distance inflicting AOE damage. So damage um, plus is going to be 20% at level 5. Okay. Passive skill is Snake Instinct. Assesses the battle situation and secures a vantage point. Can be deployed anywhere. This is actually one of the things that he is very good at regardless of any reboss or ship HP. Damage taken is actually going to be a negative 16. Um... For him, up to level 5 for his passive. Special skill, which one of the skills that I really, really like. So it's a 20 second cooldown. Valid hits is 2. Ignores damage from hit stunning special skills and shoots a spirit sword 
Deflicting AoE damage stuns the target for five, uh, 1.5 seconds. The stun here is actually sometimes crucial. And the cooldown can be lowered um, to 16 uh, when you reach level 4. And damage at level 5 is going to be plus 25%. And lastly, ultimate skill is a 40 second cooldown, valid hits is 4. This is also one of the things that I like about him in terms of a... He's actually a striker, but he supports you well if you have... Um, uh, sorry, he's a ranger. He supports you well if you have strikers and defenders in the front. Performs a slash and drops a building onto enemies, inflicting AoE damage, stuns the targets for 5 seconds. Again, very good in terms of his stuns. Damage is going to be a plus 25 up to level 4. Level 5, skill always inflicts critical damage. Again, very good kit. Um, it's just unfortunate that we don't get to have copies of him. I don't know in the future if we can. But for now, you'll have to use fusion cores for you to level him up again from 100 to 110. Okay, one of the new units that has arrived is the Administrator Shieldman. You know why he is good? He's only two um, deployment cost. So that is what makes him very good as an SR. Um, if you level him up up to level 110, he's going to be tanky for two. Um, and he's times two. Okay, so... For his basic attack, so detonates the charge embedded in his shield, inflicting damage in the front, in the target in the front. Okay, so basic attack damage is going to be a plus 20 eventually. So passive skill uh, uses his gear to keep enemies from running away. Basic attack force their targets to attack him for three seconds. Again, he has taunt and he can actually make your enemies attack him. Damage taken is going to be a total of a minus eight percent up to level four. Level 5 is going to be plus HP of 15%. And his pass another passive skill improves his gear durability and decreases damage taken from strikers, particularly by 5%. Then it increases um, up to... There's a plus 20 from strikers, so that's, that's a total of minus 25 damage taken from strikers, okay? 5, level 5, cast a bar equal to 15% of max HP for 10 seconds if HP drops to 50 or below. Again, <clears throat> at 2 cost, he is going to be, or both of them are going to be terrific. Um, Ari Alford is one of, the, one, one of the best 2 cost um, defenders that we have. But again, these two guys are going to outshine Ari, Ari Alford. But again, they're at SR. But... They can be used whether you're using soldier, you're using counters. Again, they're one of the best um, two cast defenders that we have. Okay, so before I proceed, same with this guy, the administration shield man can only be um, can only be uh, uh, what do you call this? Can, you, you can only get more copies of him and the rifleman through your summons. So at least you get to you know uh, scale them to 110 without using fusion core so back to this guy so administration rifleman uh, recently one of the best i think in dealing with defenders um because um they have a a, a increased you know increased damage in in terms of defenders so um at two cost they are actually very very useful and take a look the take a look at the kit okay for basic attack fires just a rifle so basic that basic attack damage just 20 percent max but for the passives so you have um anti-co firearm uses the ghost rifle with excellent stopping power increases attack by three percent okay so it's all attack so this guy is just built to be a glass cannon with all attack damage attack and his last passive is ADP R157 titanium barrel improves his gun for enhanced lasting power basic attack increases by 1% every time they are performed up to 10% which is very insane guys at 2 he can quickly you know he can quickly move this up to 10% and his hit increases up to level 4 at uh, this is going to be 20% so basic attack increase basic attack basic attacks increase 
attack stat by 2% instead, consi consistently up to 10%. So, this guy is purely quick, high hitting, or oh, sorry, both, both of these guys are, are fast, hard hitting, and if you really want quick damage, these guys can be used anywhere. You can use them again in your um, soldier teams. You can use them even in your mech teams, and you can use them even in your um, counter teams. Okay, so we're, we're actually hitting the portion where uh, from Lin Shin onwards, they're going to be available in your talent recruitment. So they're going to be the most, I think for me, you're going to want to develop these because um, shards are readily available in the game. You just have to farm them for, for these. So Lin Shen, so you have to, you can actually get their shards in the supply op, talent recruitment. So you can check them out there. So starting with Lin Shen, Lin Shen is actually not being used that much, but again, for the lower part of PvP and also for PvE, she can actually be very good. Especially, I'm just gonna go through the skill that makes her very good, which is actually her passive. So it restores one deployment resource upon deployment and also another one at level 5. So this is why you should still build her. I haven't had the opportunity to build her yet up to 110. But again, she is actually very, very good. Fires um, two shotguns and the knockback is actually very important as well. And for her ultimate, she also restores three deployment, th three deployment cost as well. Okay, so again, <laughs> and there's a plus one at level five. So to make this short, she is actually going to be your deployment cost queen. She is going to add deployment deployment cost to your team as long as she survives. But actually, as she as she comes in, she is going to help you immensely. Okay, so more or less for Lin Shin, she has to be taken to one ten. She is now one o four for me. But again, she has a lot of. She has a lot of, uh, what do you call this? She has a lot of um, game modes that she can be useful in. Right now, we don't have a kind of counterpart for her for SSR. So she is still a high value for your SRs. Okay, so we have here Ryan Farrier. Um, as for me, I never got to use Ryan, but I've seen what he can do. And um, you can also bring him up to 110, and she, and he is actually still very very good, still high value, um, especially if there are a lot of bans in PvP. Um, the the only drawback about him is that right now he's going he's being replaced by Liu Mi for the three three deployment cost um, defender. So um, this you eventually you'll have to progress towards Liu Mi, but if you are a beginner or you're in the middle of the game or in you know uh, in terms of progression you can still make use of him he's still high value and he packs a punch literally so sorry for the pun but again let's let's take a look at his um the skills that i'm talking about so every 18th incoming attack enable him to move forward ignoring hit stun effect forces surrounding Forces three surrounding enemies to attack him for five seconds. So he has taunt and decreases damage taken by 25%. Okay, so uh, passive um, decreases up to uh, every 13th attack if you have him at level 5 in his passive. And he has also stun. So throws a power body blow into enemies in front, stunning them for two seconds with AoE damage. So that is for his special skill. And again, he for his um, ultimate, inflicting AOE damage, last attack decreases their target's evasion by 50% for 10 seconds. Damage taken is minus 30% for 10, 10 seconds after the skill. So again, for those of you who don't have um, Liu yet, he is actually still a high-value SR that you can rely on for PvP and for PvE. Okay, so here we are with Arius. Arius is one of the healers that you should build. In a nutshell, um, she has a barrier and she has heal. 
So those are actually the the things that she brings. So restores HP for all allies upon deployment. So also um, cast a barrier equal to 15% of max HP around allies for 10. Then restores HP again for her ultimate skill. Restores allies HP, restores HP. Again, she is one of the best healers that we have we only have i would consider more or less to have to be the healers to be three you have evelyn you have um you have evelyn you have arius and you have claudia nelson she is one of the top three um, best um because they're more focused on healing some of the of the heroes or the units that we have are a mix of support and healing but most of the time she is going to be one of your pure heal healers Plus, she has a barrier to boot. Again, she can be acquired through the supply op and talent recruitment. And she is really high valued right now. Especially for PvP, you see her in a lot of matches. Especially right now that the that the Claudia has been banned. She is going to be a very good support for your teams. Not only in PvP, but also in PvE. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, Evelyn, for me... My opinion is is actually one of our best healers. It restores a lot of HP. Uh, this is actually 30% for her ultimate. And attack of all allies except herself is a plus 10% for 15 seconds after the skill. So she also does buffs. Throws a healing potion inflicting AoE damage on enemies on front. Allies within the potion explosive range recover 25% of HP for 8 seconds. So again... She deals damage, then she heals your team. Sprays uh, suspicious chemicals that miraculously benefits after every third basic attack. So she restores surrounding units HP by 2% upon the ne next basic attack. So um, for me, I did put um, attack speed on her to hasten her passive so that she could heal frequently. So again, she is a must have in your team's very high value up until this point okay so the last sr that i'm going to talk about is actually one of the most special srs she could even be an ssr because of her kit so again i built her with 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 cooldown all around and she is magnificent if you can see my gear just want to show you my gear guys the critical damage so she deals a lot of damage she actually has high hit and high crit so apart from apart from what you call this apart from giving or stunning your enemy she can actually deal a lot of damage as well let's take a look at her skill so fires a laser gun at the target so her basic attack the damage as usual is a plus 20 percent up to level five her passive is hacks into machines on the field improving their performance increases hit and evasions for all mechs on the field so if you don't have any mechs, this is not really a bother. Um, if you bring her in mech teams, this is going to make her shine more. So her HP is going to be a plus 25 up to level 4. So mech attack plus 10 added to passive buff. So passive, it's, it's kind of leaning towards mech. But again, you can use her in any team. Uh, you can use her um, in counters especially. Um, for her special skill is Lockdown Shock Buster 20, 24 second cooldown valid hit is 2. Fires enemy energy at the farthest target within range inflicting AoE damage. Stuns for 4 seconds. That's very very long. Except for soldiers encounters but again for level 5 it also can stun soldiers encounters as well. So cooldown is a minus 4 already. When you put cooldown gear on her, this is actually hasten. So this is what I like about her. And this is why she's being killed as soon as she reaches the field. And damage is going to be a plus 25 in addition. Again, guys, this skill is pretty much amazing. And again, she is borderline SSR. For her ultimate in Beautiful World, 50 second cooldown is a tactical nuke. So level... 2 to 4 damage is plus 25. Then cooldown is a minus 15. So you get this every 35 seconds. But again, 
cooldown gear will really benefit her. Okay, so again, build Sylvia, build those I have mentioned. Some of them you can check out the talent recruitment um, in the supply op. Some of them have shards there. And for the others, you'll just have to farm. And for the others, you'll just have to use your fate core. Okay, guys. Thank you very much again for staying this long in this video. And also, please consider subscribing if you haven't yet. Also, click that bell icon and put a like to this video. Guys, thank you. Stay safe. This is The Warden, and I'm out of here.